BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 101, Glaucoma. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging, covering treatment and solutions that include bioidentical hormone pellet therapy, safe and affordable skin rejuvenation, and spa quality botanical skincare. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. One of the things that we regularly refer to is the WHI study that says, oh, you can't do replacement hormones because it'll lead to cancer uh, or an increase in cancer rates. Mm -hmm. That study has been discounted, uh, but when it was out, Doctors and women all over America said, oh my God, we can't do this. And there are still women who believe that. There are still uh, articles in the newspaper or, or uh, talking heads on TV that will come out and say, oh, you shouldn't do and replacement most hormones. Say, I'm not a lot of them doctors to you. don't want to deal with the whole issue mm -hmm. at all. And, and so you've been fighting an uphill battle, you and others like you, to say we have to be aware that that is a discounted study and it, and it was wrong. It was wrong for this reason. I mean, we know what it was. It's wrong for lots of reasons because all they said was it, it may cause breast cancer, which we found estrogen doesn't right. cause breast cancer, but it didn't say, but estrogen does all these things, right. all of these good things. Positive they prevent, things. It prevents diabetes. It prevents heart disease. We now know that. We've talked about that. We had mm -hmm. a new study that people who go through menopause early have two and a half times, before 47, have two and a half times the risk of heart disease. Right, and, and, so there, and we did a podcast huge, on that which uh, means a month or so ago. Estrogen is critical to preventing all these illnesses. They didn't even look at that. They just said, oh, let's scare everybody with breast cancer. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, you should always look at the benefits of taking something and the, and the risks. Well, you shouldn't but just look at the risks. You should look at things. Yes. I mean, people Doctors flood emotionally. When, when you hear the word cancer, you shut down and say, oh my God, I'm going to die. It, or, or whoever it is, or is going to die. Or you're going to be die. disfigured with breast cancer. And most people don't die from it anymore. There, there are so many positive changes. And, and one of the things that we're becoming more aware of is the, the serendipitous positive changes that are coming uh, in part as a result of the efforts to discredit the WHI study mm -hmm. because there's so much information that we now have that we didn't have because people are collecting data and looking at things to say, well, how do we connect all these dots? And, and one of the examples you just gave about uh, the increased risk of heart disease mm -hmm. for, for women who are uh, menopausal before 45. Mm -hmm. And a new one that has come out, and it was just referenced in the Huffington Post, uh, okay. and I'm not sure what the original, oh, the journal Menopause, mm -hmm. yeah. says that women who go through menopause early, earlier than, uh, 45. Earlier than 45, have low estrogen rates unless they're treated, and that increases the likelihood that they'll have glaucoma. Yeah, so they have low estrogen levels yeah. because they go through menopause early, mm -hmm. and then they have two and a half times the risk of getting glaucoma. I mean, glaucoma, I mean, for me, that's bigger than breast cancer. Breast cancer can be treated. We're very successful at it. You can be reconstructed. Glaucoma is blindness. And, bl There's and, very and it's little the second leading do. cause of blindness in yes, the United States. it is. For, for people over 30. Right. So, if, so it's why your eye doctor always does a pressure test and looks in your eye to check for glaucoma. Yeah, so what is glaucoma? Glaucoma is, I have it in both sides of my family, both my parents. Mm -hmm had it and did not replace their And your hormones. dad went blind before he died. My dad went blind for a year before he died. Yeah. So he had, um, he had glaucoma. He also had macular degeneration, which is the third largest or third most common reason to be blind. But, mm -hmm. but he had glaucoma in one eye that totally destroyed one eye. That, that's that high pressure in this closed system that presses against the retina. And we're going to put up a... Um, an slide. anatomy slide mm -hmm. so that you can see what we're talking about. Kind of like health about. class. Right, so, but it's not that boring. So the front, the front of the eye is the whites are conjunct, is the conjunctiva. You're not old enough sclera. to remember the old black and white coronet films where the guy in the little bow tie is, Dick York no, used I to do. No, I do, I do remember Do you remember those? those? Yes, I am that This old. is the cornea. Yeah, uh, yeah, they make so. fun of it in lots of movies too yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a Saturday Night Live thing. Yeah. So, uh, in any case, you, the color part of your eye is the iris, okay? Mm -hmm. The part of your eye that you see with is the retina, and there's one little point that's the 
macula. And that's where all the light is brought, all the picture is brought together on one tiny little area called the macula. That's your central vision. Yeah. It's okay. kind of like a mirror. It's, it's when you put your face directly in front of the mirror that you can see yourself. If you're off to the side, you can't see. Right. All the light comes in and lands on that spot. And if that mm -hmm. spot is damaged, then there's no vision. Even That's though the right. rest of the mechanics of your eyes are working, there's no vision for you to see. That's right. And, ma and macular degeneration affects that one spot. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the optic nerve coming into that spot and you lose your central vision. But glaucoma affects your whole vision. It affects your, it affects all of your peripheral vision because the pressure pushes on this whole retina mm -hmm. and it destroys it. Basically the pressure is so high, it destroys all of those tiny little cones that, that see light. So it's such a wonderful system. It's an amazing camera and we have to take care of it. So when you get this pressure, you have to be treated. You definitely have to be treated. But if you don't have estrogen, we now know, then you're more likely to get this terrible problem. Yeah. So if you can replace your estrogen, you decrease your risk again, which is awesome. I mean, we, we now have a preventive medicine for women to do that. And there's other studies that have shown. So, that, so that's for glaucoma. That's glaucoma. Do, do we know if there's a, a, a connection to macular degeneration for that? Well, we do because we, we just read the new study. There's a study out that says uh, that anything to do with the optic nerve, mm -hmm. which is the macula is the optic nerve coming in, mm -hmm. and it's, it's what we see at the very end of the optic nerve. Optic nerve takes all your sight back to your brain so you can see it. And if that nerve becomes pressured with glaucoma, and is damaged, or if it becomes covered with that goo that causes uh, mm -hmm. Alzheimer's, yeah, the then those Alzheimer's and the um, and losing your sight in the macular vision and glaucoma are all related. Okay. So they've they've found that and estrogen tie. estrogen prevents totals. that. Right. So in women, estrogen prevents that. There have been other studies on um, I believe it was macular degeneration with testosterone in men. So they'll, they'll someday, will walk through the door of actually testing testosterone on women and seeing the same thing because it does the same thing in both men and women. So mm -hmm. we'll have an added way to prevent it. So when, if you want to keep your eyes healthy, you want to make sure that you see your eye doctor every year after, after 45, honestly. Well, yeah, the statistic from the journal Menopause, menopause before age 45 increases the rate of glaucoma by 2.6 times. That's a lot. 6% of women enter menopause before age 45. So that's 9.42 million women in the United States alone who are at increased risk for glaucoma. That's amazing. And glaucoma I mean, is the second cause of blindness in those over 30. Under 30, the leading cause of blindness is injury to the eye. Trauma. Over 30, it is cataracts, glaucoma, and macular degeneration. But we have great treatment for cat cataracts. Yeah. We have great treatment for cataracts. We can, replace, we can replace the lens of the eye. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to use um, cadaver eyes, but now we even have, they make a lens that you can put in that's, that's synthetic. Do so you like Betty Davis eyes? No. <laughs> uh-huh. So, uh, nobody got that. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> I know, maybe. I just, it depends amused on the age of, our, yeah, age of our audience. Yeah. So, uh, so in any case, we have other ways to replace cataracts, and it's much more of a quick, smooth surgery. Lots of people have that. That has a lot to do with not wearing your sunglasses. And ladies, those really expensive sunglasses you get at Nordstrom's, they're not polarized. They're not helping you a bit. They just make the light a little darker. You need to get polarized lenses. The fancy ones should be polarized. They're not. And so they're not helping you. They make you look good at the time, but you may be damaging your lens. And, and when you lose the $5 ones you get at Walmart, <laughs> you, you know, you haven't lost a lot. Polarized are more expensive than that. Oh, but, okay. You know, All right. But they're not, not expensive like the designer ones. No. But they're much more useful, and they will prevent that problem. So wear your sunglasses with polarized lenses, and take your estrogen, and eat lots of carrots and carotene. Uh, I drink carrot juice every day. That's kind of like, I, you know, it helps my skin. It helps everything. And someday I'll turn yellow, I'm sure. But 
but it's really good for me. I feel good when I take it. But lutein is, is one of the carotenes that you can take in a pill. And lutein is great for your eyes. And it's a type of carotene found in, in kale, which I never eat, but you eat, right. and spinach. And so if you don't like kale and spinach or you don't cook with it, then just pop a lutein every day to protect your, your eyes from getting glaucoma <laughs> and macular degeneration. What? Oh, I'm thinking of uh, that movie, Somebody's Great Adventure, Bill and, Bill and, Bill Ted's, and Ted's Great Adventure, where they were popping a lewd. Oh, yeah. Well, sorry. Yeah, a oh, sorry. So you want to articulate carefully. I'm sorry. Lutein. Pop a lewd. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Yeah, I didn't even, that didn't even come across my Well, you lived in a different yeah. world than I did. No, I saw that movie. Yeah. But I didn't see it 10 times like you did. So um, in any case, there's a lot of things that block estrogen. You have to look at that too. There's, there are um, medicines that we use to block estrogen like uh, Lupron that we use for infertility. Mm -hmm. And birth control pills, believe it or not, birth control pills put you at a lower estrogen level when you're young than you would have if you had no birth control pills. So we kind of have to be looking at the next generation of and, everybody and taking birth control pills yeah. because this is a long-term They're going to be a higher risk population. As exposure they to low estrogen. When I te test estrogens levels and FSH and LH on women who are on birth control pills on these low dose ones, mm -hmm. their levels are so low they can't be measured. Wow. Lower than menopause. So, so that's I mean they haven't done a study on that. I'm sure that mm -hmm. that's coming, but that a long-term study on long-term low-dose estrogen mm -hmm. uses is probably it's blocking their own estrogen of, of youth so a segue there, there's something called the uh, hormone health network yes that tracks what's going on in in hormone health and mm -hmm. and news about it and they mm -hmm. put out an interesting statement the other day that said that uh, 72 percent of women mm -hmm. who are and, and I believe it was menopausal, I'm not sure, uh, but it says 72% of the women are not receiving any kind of treatment for their hormone losses. I mean, I, I'm a gynecologist. Yeah. That's, that is, has happened in the last 10 years. Okay. Because before that, every postmenopause exam, you talked about hormones, you talked about symptoms of hormone loss. You talked about what the patient wanted to do about it. You had a plan. What was available. But now it's just like, since that one study, I wish I had a study or I could do a study that would be that, had that much impact, mm -hmm. but in a whole different way, in a positive way instead of a negative way. But it stopped doctors from talking about it. They're just yeah. like, I don't do that. That's the end of the conversation. But there's so many things women need to know. Right. So, so well, so it's Tell them the answer to this. This is crazy. 72% of the women are receiving no treatment, and 60% of the women are not even discussing it with their doctor, which means that 12% of that group are, and they and their doctor are deciding not to do anything about right. it. Right. That's right. But where are they getting their information, Brett? Well, they're getting it from the mass media. <laughs> no, uh, they're getting it from <laughs> Menopause the Musical. <laughs> That's what this suggested, <laughs> that you go to Menopause the Musical to get your information. Yeah. I mean, interestingly enough, I think they should go to my website or listen to us. Well, if they're but, listening to the podcast, they're, they're or, going to your Or website. go to WebMD or go to, I mean, some other yeah. source. I think that there's probably good information in this musical, frankly. I've, I've heard excerpts of it. I haven't mm -hmm. seen it. So maybe I'm speaking out of school because I'm not, I haven't experienced yet. But if that's where you have to get your information, medicine's doing something wrong. Well, it's a vehicle for entertainment that also conveys information that, that you And that's good. At least it brings it Kind of like home. when patent leather shoes shine up was a vehicle yeah. for entertainment. <laughs> okay, so one of the things I consider, I, lo I love to uh, learn by, like, I don't, you're a history buff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not a history buff. I can't read a book about history. It's just, it's just not in my brain. But if I go to a country... Or if I, if I watch a movie, I can watch a movie about the history of a country or a person or a biography, and I love that. Right. So this may be filling People have different the learning gap. styles. They get information they in from the, different the ways. They the learning gap and be learning about the science and, and the, the camaraderie of women in menopause mm -hmm. because we all have all these symptoms. I don't think that's where it should end. Well, and the cultural stereotypes. 
you know, <laughs> the, the people make jokes and, and they make songs and they have a play mm -hmm. about all the stereotypes. But within that, there is information to fight those stereotypes. I mean, stereotypes as a standalone concept in, in psychology and sociology, they're, they're forms of mental uh, shorthand so that you don't have to stop and think. i give you a real quick example. When, if you have an, an infant and you're trying to teach them to tie their shoes, when they're learning to tie their shoes, they really have to concentrate on it. And you, you put a little kid on the couch and say, you can't go outside and play until you get your shoe mm -hmm. tied. You know, and they're working with motor coordination and, and uh, methodology and they get frustrated and they're upset. Fast forward 20 years later, not 60 years later because they're using all Velcro shoes, but 20 years later, <laughs> uh, they can tie their shoes, chew gum, have a conversation, eat breakfast and watch TV all at the same time. And because read they, their email. They don't have to pay attention to it. Right. And so the, the issue with stereotypes is that it's a type of shorthand where there's a package of perceptions that you don't individually have to attend to. Mm -hmm. And some of those you know, are, are critical and make fun of and tease. And, and some don't. And some are dangerous. Some are dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, some are offensive. Mm -hmm. But this is one that may be dangerous uh, if you just look at the surface level. Mm -hmm. But if you hear the, the deeper message, talk to your doctor, get information, consider getting treatment, because these are very real and life-threatening issues that will increase the kinds of risk and the kinds of things that you may suffer from as you age. And this is why we're here. We're here to educate. Mm -hmm. We're here to open up your mind and give you a different point of view than you may be getting in the brief visit with your doctor because your doctor doesn't have a lot of time because of the whole system of HMOs and all that jazz. They, they have to schedule people pretty close together and so it may not be a long conversation. Right. It may and, not, and it may not need to be. And it may not need to be, especially if you're not really open to looking at hormones. Right. But if you are looking at that, then you need all the information you can get to decide Huh, I'm at risk. I know I'm at risk for glaucoma. I, I am never going off estrogen. Right. There is no way I'm ever going off estrogen or testosterone. I want my eyes more than I want anything else because I use them more all day long than any other part of my body. I mean, that's my way of learning and that's my way of reading and seeing and experiencing what's around me. Eyes are huge and you should take care of them. It is not like, oh, I don't need to go to the eye doctor because that just, that's not like going to the primary care. You need your eyes. You need well, to see those ophthalmologists. And so for so many people, they don't have insurance that pays for eye doctors. You know, their insurance may pay for other kinds of physicians, and so they avoid or put off going to the eye doctor because mm -hmm. they say, well, I can't afford it. You, I mean, Most pay for that, I would rather lose don't... any part of my body besides my eyes. I mean, I the, the thought of going blind from me, because I read all the mm -hmm. time, and if I can't do things physically, at least I can read. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's a personal horror. So know, to, to me, me it's worthwhile to, to go to the eye doctor. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, it would certainly encourage you, if you have any of these concerns, talk to your doctor, go see an eye doctor. Yes, absolutely. And, and care for your eyes. Remember the sunglasses. Remember taking your vitamins in the lutein and lutein and, uh, and or drinking carrot juice or both. I mean, remember those things because in remembering them, then you'll take care of your eyes. Mm -hmm. and, and that's very important that you don't ignore infections, you don't ignore pain in your eye, you don't ignore redness or yellow uh, sclera, which is the whites of the eye. So you have to look at your eyes and see if they look normal on a daily basis. You're looking in the mirror to brush your teeth or whatever, you should be taking care of your eyes as well. Well, and there are two specialties. There's optometrist and ophthalmologist, and if you go to one and need the other, they'll refer you. I mean, they're, they're mm -hmm. professionals, and they, they have those defined specializations. Just get yourself to an eye doctor if you have this issue or if you are high risk to have these issues. Yeah, know your family history. Know what your mom and dad and your grandparents had because yeah. it's in everybody. It's kind of like diabetes. Everybody had diabetes. Everybody had glaucoma in my family, and nobody died of cancer. So it doesn't mean I couldn't get it, but... I don't worry about it all the time, but I worry about diabetes and I worry about my diet and my eyes. Well, and it's something that we tend not to think about until there's a problem. Right. And, and for, especially if it, there's an estrogen component or a hormone component that the lack of that increases your risk, you're not necessarily gonna know until something happens. It's too late. And then it's too late. So check it out. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the BioBalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. 
For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit BioBalanceHealth.com or call 314-993-0963. Follow Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Brett Newcomb can be found at brettnewcomb.com.